The Lomography Sprocket Rocket is a 35mm panoramic film camera that has the unique ability to expose the entire film strip, including the sprocket holes. This look is achieved by exposing the width of two frames, so the traditional 3x2 35mm frame is now a 1x3 panoramic. Hey all, my name is Brian and I am a photographer and videographer based in New York. For the last three months, Filmography has kindly lent me this amazing sprocket rocket, one of their staple products that's been on the market for over a decade. This is a plastic point and shoot camera that takes any 35mm film to produce a wide panoramic image. The lens on the front is a 30mm focal length with plastic optics. I've come to appreciate modern plastic cameras since I've found that they can still produce really good images for film. It's incredibly lightweight and you can carry this camera around everywhere without it being a burden. Alright, so let's cover the specs real fast. It's got two focus distances with 0.6 meters to 1 meter or 1 meter to infinity. It also has two aperture choices at f10.8 which is basically f11, or f16 for sunny days. It has a shutter speed of 1 100th of a second or bulb for long exposures. It's all plastic, so it only weighs 215 grams and surprisingly, it has a hot shoe attachment for flashes. It's usually been priced about 80 US dollars, but you can find it for 67 right now on Lomography's website. Now let's cover the build of the Sprocket Rocket and how to use it. Let's start with loading the film through the detachable back. Open the backing with these two metal clasps and you'll see the inner workings. The sprocket rocket comes with a plastic mask to cover the sprockets if you choose, but I removed it since the whole point of this camera is to expose the entire film strip. The left side of the camera is where you'll load your unexposed film canister. Pop up the knob above it so you can fit in your canister and once it's snug, pop it back down. Make sure it's completely secure, then pull the film leader into the take-up spool on the right. Fit the film leader into the slot and make sure it catches onto one of the sprockets. Turn the advanced knob above the take-up spool to make sure it's catching on. Once you feel advanced, that's all. You've loaded your film. Super easy. Take the camera backing you removed before and place it back on the camera and make sure it clicks into place to avoid light leaking in. Now the next thing you'll need to look at is the top of the camera. The knob on the right is an advanced knob to advance the film after every exposure. You need to make sure you do this so you don't accidentally create a double exposure over your previous shot. The middle of the camera is a hot shoe for flashes. This camera does not come with a flash, so if you want more light, you'll need to place the flash here with electronic connections. The two holes to the left of the hot shoe are to inform you of your shot count and frame placement. The right hole will give you a number to tell you which shot you're on, and the left hole has a white dot to indicate that you've advanced to the next frame. Since the panoramic images are all very long, the white dot tells you that you've advanced the film far enough without clipping the previous exposure. Finally, the knob on the left is your rewind knob. Once you finish your roll, turn this clockwise to spool your exposed film back into your canister. Now the front of the camera is where most of the actual shooting operation happens. Typically modern film cameras have a shutter button on the top plate of the camera, but the Sprocket Rocket has a unique little shutter release lever on the lens. It's very easy to use, just press down on the lever and then let go to take a shot. It has a really satisfying shutter sound and you'll know you've taken exposure. The top of the camera has an N or B. N is 1 100th of a second and B is bold for long exposure. The barrel of the lens has your two focus options, which are indicated by a flower icon or a mountain icon to show close focus and infinity focus. The bottom of the lens has your aperture settings, f10.8, indicated by clouds, or f16, indicated by sun. I kept my shots at f10.8 since most color negative films deal with being overexposed much better than with being underexposed. I'd recommend shooting with the aperture set to this cloud unless if you're in blinding sunlight. So what are my thoughts after shooting with this camera for a bit? The panoramic shots with exposed sprockets is a synonymous look with Lomography Sprocket Rocket. Under careful use, you can get some great images. I took this camera with me to San Francisco and Alaska and the panoramic aspect ratio is perfect for landscapes. It's super easy to use and pretty easy to go through one roll since one traditional 35mm film roll is cut down in half since you're using two frames per shot. Although this camera has plastic optics, it still produced some pretty clean images. I was expecting really poor image quality all the way across the board, but it held up well. I only had a few underexposed shots. You can just pick it up and shoot it without having to worry about anything else. 
Now the downsides to this camera. While I was surprised with the image quality, it still showed why it's only a $60 to $70 camera. But the edges of the shots are pretty blurry and distorted, but I doubt many people will be angry about this. Another thing is that the rear backing has a film indicator window to remind you which film you're shooting with. This is a great nice to have since many expensive film cameras don't even have this feature, but I'm 90% sure that the light seals on this window aren't very secure. I decided to tape over this window since I discovered multiple light leaks on my photos. I'd recommend putting a, like a piece of gaff tape over this window after you load your film and only slightly peel it if you forget which film stock you're shooting with. Another note is that if you're shipping your film off to a film lab, you'll need to tell them that you shot with a panoramic 35mm film camera. Now this is super important to note since they'll need to be prepared to scan a non-standard 1x3 panoramic image instead of the usual 3x2 frame. Asking for anything non-standard with a film lab will probably cost you a couple bucks, uh, but this is unavoidable. If you're scanning at home like I did, you'll need to make sure you stitch your panoramic images. I use the Skier Sunray Carrier that has an adjustable mat to expose for panoramic images. If you're someone that scans a lot of film at home, I believe Negative Supply is now selling their Pro Film Carrier 35 uh, and that has the ability to scan panoramic images. To wrap it up, lomography cameras are always a ton of fun to use and are super travel friendly. The benefit of an affordable film camera is that I'm never afraid to break or lose it and most people won't be intimidated if you're shooting with this in public. The Sprocket Rocket is the best choice to shooting panoramic 35mm film without having to jump up to something ridiculous like a $4,000 or $5,000 Hasselblad X-Pan. It's definitely a cheaper plastic film camera so don't expect the most pristine photos, but don't let that stop you from trying this out. I like to thank Lomography for lending me this camera to use for the last couple weeks. They didn't pay me or anything, they just had an extra review copy to use, so I reached out to them and they said they were happy uh, to lend me one. So I recommend go picking one up or trying one if you have a friend that has one. Uh, they're a ton of fun to use. Keep an eye out for more videos coming down the road. I'll have a ton coming out in 2023. Thanks guys.